will say, hey, what was on that Boston Pops concert? You can say, well, some Dvorak, Dancing Queen. Well, that one's kind of for fun, but it does make a point. We do play a tremendously wide range of musical expression. Um, the Boston Pops will be 130 years old next year, uh, and they're, hey, let's hear it for 130. And in the first 45 years of the institution's history, there were 17 conductors. Wasn't very good in terms of job security. <laughs> Since 1930, there have only been three. Um, Arthur Fiedler, who was on the podium into his 50th year with the organization. I've now, now been there 20 years. I'm the second longest tenure, and it's never, I'm never going to catch up. And in between, the person I followed, uh, the man who is the living definition of the, a hard act to follow, perhaps the best known composer in the world, John Williams. Ever since John took the podium in 1980, his wonderful music has been an integral part of the Boston Pops repertory. And uh, it's really amazing when you look at this man, what he has accomplished over the years. 21 Grammy Awards, five Academy Award nominations, 49 Academy Award nominations, which is second in history only to Walt Disney. And, uh, and, and still going strong at the tender age of 83 next week. So happy birthday, John, wherever you are. There's, there's such an amazing range of, of output as a composer. He has set the tone for so many different kinds of stories, but some of my favorite things of his are the, the movies in which he underscores the wonderment of the child, and these are two such works. This is Harry's Wondrous World from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, followed by the flying theme from E.T., the Extraterrestrial. 